Hello there. In this episode of Twitter Points Code, we will have a look briefly at how to create a Node.js Express backend application with MySQL database. Without wasting anyone's time, let's get started. First, we need to have access to a MySQL database and I will use the one that comes with XAMPP in this tutorial. I have a video on how to install and set it up so you can check it out. Also, we need to have Node.js installed. I will put the links to the videos and other useful files in the description below. We will start by creating a project, so let's visit the command line. We will start by creating a directory. We will enter the directory and use npm in it to initialize the project. For any option that you want to keep, you'll just hit enter. For the entry point, I like to use server.js. Once you have done that, let's create our server.js file. Now let's install a few packages. The first package is Express, which is a Node.js framework. Secondly, we install MySQL, which will allow us to communicate with the MySQL database. And lastly, we will install Nodemon. Nodemon will make it possible for us to continuously run our server in the background. I forgot to bring the ad. Remember, you can equally do this with npm install but I find the ARM to be faster on my PC. Once the installation has completed, let's open the project in the code editor and set up our server. Inside the server.js, we bring in Express. Create an app using the express package. Also, we create a port variable. Now, let's create a basic get route. And this will take a callback function. Now make use of the response parameter to return a statement to the user. Now once you've done that, we we'll go ahead to listen. We will listen to the port that we just set here. This will return a callback as well. So our server will be running on the local host at port 3000. Now inside the package.json file, we will use Nodemon to set up a start script for our server. So we add it to the script, we will call it start. This is the command we use to start our server. So now back on the command line, we can start our server by calling npm start. Now we see that our server is running at localhost port 3000. And we can open this in a browser. And we see hello world it's a test server in the browser now let's go ahead to set up our database connection with mysql to do that we'll create another file and we'll call it db.js inside the db.js file 
we start by requiring MySQL. Once we've done that, we set up a connection. We make use of the create connection method on MySQL. This will take an object with the configuration of our database. Since the database is on our PC, our host will be localhost. My user is called root. This user has no password. And the name of our database is my first database. It already exists in my database and I want to use that. Now we go ahead to make the connection using connection.connect. This takes a callback which returns an error. Now if there is an error, we want to log it to the console. We will concatenate the actual error to it. After that, we want to return. Else if there is no error, you want to return a success message to the console. Now we want to export the connection variable from the db.js file. So we use model.export. Now we import the connection into the server.js file. We will call it MySQL DB since it is the connection we have to our database. And we will target the connection variable. Now let's check our console. On the console, we see that in addition to server is running, we see MySQL database connected successfully also. So now we've established connection with the database. Now let's create a few routes to communicate to the database. First of all, we'll create a route to fetch some data from the students table that we have in my first database. So we'll create another get route. For the endpoint, we will use for slash data. Now we use the method query, which comes with our connection object. The first parameter will be the SQL query. For now, we we'll put a select query to select all from the student. The second parameter we will take is a callback function. This callback has parameters, error, results and also fields. The fields contain information about the fields that we have in our table. For now, we just make use of the error and the result. Now if there is an error, we want to throw an error. Otherwise, we want to return the data to the user in a JSON format. Here, you can do whatever you want with the data you have received. So now we can try it out in a browser. We add forward slash data to the URL. Once we do that, we see that the records in our database have been returned. We can confirm by visiting the database in phpMyAdmin.
we see that we have five records here. Inside this browser, the result is formatted nicely. We can also do this in Postman. We will do it for one of the routes later. Now let's create another route for when we want to select a particular data based on some ID. So we'll copy and paste this. We will adjust the endpoint and add a search ID parameter to it. Putting colon in front of search ID makes it a parameter. Now we can access the search ID from request.params. So we can destructure it. Now in the query, we add a where clause. Now instead of putting the ID directly into the query string, we want to escape it, which will make SQL injection very difficult. So we'll put a question mark here, and we'll pass the value as another argument to the query method. So we'll put the search ID here. If you have multiple values to pass, you can go ahead to put them in an array. Now we save this and try it in the browser. Now let's try it for ID4. Once we do that, we see that only one record is written and it is the record with ID4. That's nice. So the last thing we will try is to insert data into the MySQL database. So we will create another route for that, but this time it will be a post route. Once again, let's copy and paste this. For the endpoint, we will change it to add. Now to be able to access the post data, like the data that we get from a form, we need to make use of an express middleware. This will pass our post variables and make them accessible in the route handler. So we can access the data from the route.body. We call the data details. Now the data we are expecting will be an object that is having a key value pair. And we can easily store such data in our MySQL database by using the insert into query. But instead of using values, we we'll make use of set. I'll put a question mark and you pass the details object to it. Now we can save it and try it out. For trying out this, we'll make use of Postman so that we'll be able to pass some data. So I have a Postman request here. The type is post and the link matches the route that we just created. That is localhost port 3000 forward slash add. Now we want to pass a JSON object to this route. Checking from the details of the database, we have an ID, first name, last name, and date of birth. But the ID is auto increment, so I will not pass that value. Let's make some changes. Now we can go ahead to send our request. Once we send it, we receive an object with details about what has just happened. We see that affected rows is 1, which means we've just created a new row, and we receive the ID of the just inserted record as well. Now we don't have any warning here, which means that everything is fine. Now let's have a look at the data in our table. On refreshing the page, we see that we have a new record here which matches the record that we just created. So basically that's all. So we've been able to connect our Node and Express backend application to MySQL database. For more information about the Node.js, Express and MySQL setup, I'll put a link to the documentation in the description below. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.
please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next episode